Thank you, everyone, for this opportunity to present our research on operative microwave ablation for neuroendocrine liver metastases. So I have no personal disclosures, uh, and those of uh, several co-authors are listed here. So neuroendocrine liver metastases are uh, very common for uh, gastrointestinal neuroendocrine tumors, uh, with up to 60 to 90% uh, common at, pre at the time of presentation. While surgical resection is preferable for these patients, uh, for the liver, unfortunately, a large majority of these patients have an unresectable burden of disease. Therefore, multimodal liver-directed therapies are essential in order to maintain symptom control as well as to try to improve survival for these patients. Tumor ablative technologies have been around and have been uh, one of the mainstays within this multimodal regimen for either patients who would, who would otherwise have an inadequate liver remnant, should surgical resection be performed, or for otherwise ineligible operative candidates. And these ablations can also be performed in conjunction with a resection in order to achieve better disease control for multimodal disease, multifocal disease. Specifically, microwave ablation is one of the newer technologies, and it has been demonstrated to be safe and effective for treatment of other liver tumors, such as hepatocellular carcinoma and colorectal liver metastases, and has acceptable oncologic outcomes. Additionally, microwave ablation may also have some technical advantages over RFA. But unfortunately, the literature on microwave ablation is still quite limited. There's only a, few, a number of studies which incorporate small numbers of patients, and these really focus on the technical aspects of ablation, microwave ablation, looking at all different liver types, liver tumor types. Neuroendocrine tumors is a small subset of those patients, but no specific study looking at neuroendocrine liver metastases has been performed. So the objectives of our study was to present the largest single institutional series of operative microwave ablation for neuroendocrine liver metastases to date to demonstrate that a minimally invasive approach is feasible for both microwave ablation performed alone as well as in combination with resection, and also to show the potential impact on survival and symptom control for patients treated with either curative or cytoreductive intent. This was a retrospective review performed at a single quaternary referral HPB center over the past 10 years from 2008 to 2018, and we only included surgical microwave ablations there were no per percutaneous microwave ablations included in this study. We looked at ablation details and, com and combined operations for ablation characteristics, operative outcomes, perioperative outcomes, as well as recurrence and survival for these patients. And the patients were divided based on whether they received curative or cytoreductive intent, which was essentially managed based on whether they were able to achieve complete treatment of known disease at the time of the completion of the operation. There were 50 patients in the study, period. Of these, 70% underwent curative intent treatment, and the remaining 30% underwent cytoreduction. For operative approach, we performed microwave ablation alone in 28 patients. And of these, 96% were done in a minimally invasive, or in our case, essentially all laparoscopic uh, approach. Only one patient had an open ablation alone, and this was performed within the first year of our experience. The remaining 22 patients had a combined resection, which incorporated either a, in a hepatic or, and sometimes in combination with both of these, a primary neuroendocrine tumor resection. And even of these, 64% were able to be completed laparoscopically in minimally invasive fashion. Median length of stay for microwave ablation alone was two days. It was only increased to four days as a median for patients who had a combined resection procedure. 30-day readmission was 14% and 30-day major complications, which was by the uh, grade three to five clavian dindo classification, was 7% when an ablation alone was performed, and though did expectedly increase to 23% for patients with a combined op uh, resection procedure. Only one patient died during the 30-day post-operative period for a mortality rate of 2%. There were 164 tumors which were detected either on preoperative CT scan or intraoperative ultrasound and liver uh, laparoscopic evaluation of the liver that were treated with ablation in our study. And they were relatively equally distributed throughout the liver, as you can see on the right. We did a post-operative CT scan or post-ablation CT scan at four to six weeks after surgery, and this showed only one patient with an incomplete ablation for a 0.7% per tumor incomplete ablation rate. Eight patients who were treated with curative intent 
had missed lesions that were detected on this first post-ablation CT scan, which represented unsuccessful curative intent. Of the 20 patients who had profound carcinoid symptoms that was refractory to medical management before surgery, 95% also had substantial improvement or resolution of these symptoms after their surgery, uh, especially including all six patients who underwent cider reduction. During our median follow-up of 32 months, there were no episodes of local recurrence. And overall survival at one year was above 93%, with five-year survival still nearly 70%. For the 27 patients who had successful cure, again, that was evidence of treatment of all disease noted on the first post-ablation CT scan, one-year survival, one-year recurrence free survival was nearly 86%, although this did drop substantially, as would be expected in this disease process, to 27% by five years. Additionally, progression-free survival for the remaining 23 patients who had persistent disease noted on their post-ablation CT scan progression-free survival was still almost 70% at first year. So although we uh, recognize that some of the limitations of this study would be in a single institutional se series and small uh, patient numbers, although this is the largest reported to date with neuroendocrine tumors, specifically for microwave ablation, uh, we also acknowledge that a number of these outcomes are still confounded by the multimodal treatment that these patients appropriately received, so we can't directly contribute any one particular outcome to their ab ablation. However, in concert with multimodal treatments, we believe that operative microwave ablation is effective to be able to provide uh, treatment for symptom control and sur improve survival for curative and cytoreductive intent for neuroendocrine liver mitts. A minimally invasive approach is also preferable and frankly feasible for a major a m many numbers of patients. And this can be combined with either a hepatic and or a primary tumor resection, which can offer curative intent for an expanded uh, volume of patients with extensive disease. And finally, operative microwave ablation in our study was associated with excellent rates of symptom control, again, both for patients undergoing curative and cytoreductive intent. And that's all. I thank you very much for the opportunity to present, and I'll take any questions.